Hello, my name's Hans and today at Rimmer Brothers we're going to be fitting some new rear brake shoes, wheel cylinders and brake adjusters on a Mark II Spitfire 1965. First of all we need to remove the hub cap and loosen the wheel nuts. These are 11 sixteenths nuts. I'm just using my good trusty breaker bar slacking them off. Once we've slackened the nuts we can jack it up. We've now raised it up on a jack, we can now spin off the wheel nuts. Now we need to remove a flat headed screw, it's a countersunk screw and I'm using a flat bladed screwdriver. So we've removed this little screw, we can see if this will come off. If this won't come off we need to undo the brake adjuster around the back. Once we've slackened that off it should come off easily. Now we've removed the brake drum we can see we need to remove these retaining pins and springs and then this split pin. I'm using a tool as such or you can use a pair of grips this one just fits over the cup, press it down and it releases the spring and the top cup. Remove the pin from out the back and place it to one side. Do the same on this side. This time I'll show you using a pair of pipe grips. If we gently squeeze the metal washer, turn it 90 degrees and off it comes. Collect the pin out of the back and then we need to re remove the split pin. We've straightened out the split pin and now we just need to remove the split pin which will replace it with a new one and then gently pull the bottom shoe out and just unhook it from the brake adjuster. Once we've done that releases the pressure on the top spring and we can pair of grips and unhook the top spring. Once we've released the top spring we can gently lower it down and it should all come off together. Lay it down so we know which way it came off. Okay if we need to replace the brake shoe adjuster there are two nuts around the back. I'm using a 10 millimeter spanner and as you can see they're a bit fiddly to get to. I'm using an open-ended spanner. And there's two there is a possibility these will shear off but if replacing the adjuster doesn't really matter. Once we've removed the two nuts we can use a pry bar or a screwdriver. And remove the brake adjuster. These little bits will fall out. As you can see this is quite a new one but we're going to replace it. We need to remove the handbrake cable and there's a clevis pin and there should be a split pin in there. We can see somebody's just put a piece of wire in there and it's, uh, yeah, it's not good practice at all. But we'll remove it anyway. That didn't take much to pull out. Should be a spring across here to hold the two together as well. We'll fit a new one when we come to put it all back together. So remove the clevis pin and now we're going to crack off the hydraulic brake hose. Okay, we're using a 9-16ths AF spanner. And we're going to oh, 
that's it. Loosen off the brake hose. Sometimes giving it a tighten up first helps you loosen it. So we've cracked it off now. We can now remove the rubber gaiter. And there should be some metal U-shaped pieces around the back. We now need to slide out of the way. One goes one way and the other goes the other way. Note which way they fit because they're both different. Once these two pieces are removed, I'm going to pull the assembly through the back plate. I have to remove the brake nipple first. I'm going to remove the handbrake lever. Slacken off the bleed nipple. Removed it, pulled the whole assembly through the back plate and now we can put the spanner back on the brake hose and twist off the wheel cylinder. Note you'll get a bit of brake fluid leakage. Okay, we've removed the wheel cylinder. I'm going to quickly remove the old washer fit a new one and then screw on the wheel cylinder. So we'll quickly take that off, clean all the threads, put the new sealing copper washer on and then screw on the new wheel cylinder. Nip it up so it doesn't leak and then we need to remove the nipple and insert it back in. But before we do that we're just going to clean the black plate, put some copper grease on the mating surfaces. Quickly remove the bleed nipple. Insert it back through the hole and then put the nipple back in. That will stop any further leakage. Before we fit the new handbrake lever in, I'm going to show you where it fits in the old cylinder. Those two pegs fit in those two little slots there and you can see it. It's like a little hinge bit there. So it's important when you fit this in, we actually fit it behind and it slots into those two little grooves. In position we can just make sure that it all nicely rotates like it does then. When we're happy with that, we can fit these U-shaped pieces around the back. I'm using the old unit to show you how to fit these retaining plates. I usually fit this one first and you can see it has two little dimples and the other one has two matching holes and once we've slid the first one on the other one goes in on the other side and when the two holes snap into the little dimples it locks it all in place and now this is spring loaded against the back plate and it should slide backwards and forwards in the back plate as it needs to. Before we fit the new handbrake shoe adjuster I'm going to use some copper slip and nicely go around all the threads Also put a generous helping down the balls for the little collets. Steel and aluminium don't like to uh, mix together and they do corrode so give a good generous coating. It also helps them from falling out afterwards. As you can see it doesn't fall out. Before fitting the adjuster I'm just going to show you the correct spanner you use for adjusting the shoes. This is a square one, quarter inch drive and it fits on the end really snugly. 
don't use an open-ended spanner or anything else because if you chew that up it will make life very difficult to move afterwards. So we're, we're going to insert the adjuster and there's one spring washer and one nut around the back. As you can see we've fitted the uh, brake shoe springs on the rear of the uh, shoes and we're going to try and fit it over the flange. Might take several attempts to do this. Hopefully this will go on. Just going to fit the little screws in there, the little pins and we've got some springs. Don't forget to put the split pin in for the handbrake lever. We just need to uh, drop it in. And that'll be fine like that. Before fitting the drum, we're just going to use some Scotch Brite, clean all the dust and make sure the drum's lovely and clean. If there's a rust lip we need to grind that off but this is absolutely fine. So we're just going to line up the two screw holes with the flange, fit it back on. Don't forget the little screws that go in. Once this is fitted we just need to adjust the uh, brake adjuster. Before connecting the handbrake cable we're going to adjust the handbrake shoes. I'm going to show you using the old adjuster how we do it. To actually make the shoes go outwards and lock into the drum we need to screw this inwards and uh, we're going to fit this round the back. Usually I only manage to turn it about 90 degrees at a time. Just need to uh, adjust it until this is solid and then loosen it off a few turns until it's nice and loose. We could always see how much play there is by pressing on the lever on the handbrake. That also centralises the shoes and I'm just going to notch it a few more turns to tighten it up. Yeah, that's a lot better now. All we need to do is reconnect the handbrake cable using a Clevis pin and a new split pin. Once we've put the split pin in, we can just put the spring that holds the cable towards the back plate. Just showing you fitting this handbrake cable return spring. We fed it through the hole in that little bracket and we need to uh, insert it in there. I'm just using a pair of pipe grips. And it will take several attempts. And as you can see this is now pulling the handbrake cable so it's nice and free. Make sure you're happy with everything being tight. We need to bleed the brakes obviously, um, don't forget to do that. We'll show that in another video but uh, we need to just replace this wheel and then do exactly the same on the other side. When we've tightened the wheel nuts on by hand, we can then lower the jack and torque them up to, uh, I think we set it at 40 pounds per foot. We've lowered the jack and now we're torquing up the wheel nuts. 
it's always good to have a workshop manual that gives you all the torque settings any other important information you will need while doing the job.